to really understand the heaven and the earth and worlds and realms and times, you have to have a revelation of Genesis 2 verse 4. Genesis 2 verse 1, 2, 3 and 4 needs to really be together with chapter 1, which I would say is the guarantees of God set in place. His word is forever settled in the heavens. And this word was revealed to Moses when he wrote this and nothing on earth can change it. Nothing man do can change it. It's going to work through time until we are back where we fell out. And we need to understand these different times and seasons to actually understand the purposes of God. You have to understand the purposes of God to enter it. There are so many people, we are so touched by the Spirit and we are moved by the Spirit. And when COVID comes along, we're looking for the beast and our eyes are totally off Christ again. So when you understand these times and seasons, you will know and you'll understand. You see what happened? Adam ate of the tree of knowledge, but wisdom gives you understanding and insight. So in Genesis 2 verse 1, 2 and 3, he talks about the seventh day, which is the final day. And God ended his work. He rested, he blessed it, he sanctified it. It was a complete day. But here in verse 4, he says, these seven days are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in a day. Genesis 1 describes the creation day where everything happened and it was not six days or seven days. It was, it could have been millions and billions of years. It was seven perfect periods. And like day is a realm. Day one is a perfect period. So light day is the realm of Eden and the realm of pleasure. There are seven days, seven periods of time, which forms the day of creation. And God said to Adam, do not eat of that tree of knowledge. If you eat of that tree of knowledge, trees are people. So Satan sneaked his head in there and it's so clear. He's, Satan came and deceived them. But he was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He just had knowledge. He doesn't have understanding and the spirit. If you eat of that, God warned them, in that day you'll die. Time is a day of death because the minute they ate, they stepped out of Eden and the clock started ticking. So when we talk about the end of the world and the end of time and the end of the earth, it's all different periods. The beginning of creation is a total different time than the beginning of time and the foundation of the world, which was in Abraham, because that was the world that was going to bring forth the Christ. We need to really get a hold on beginnings and endings, and every ending is a new beginning. As the one end, the next one came immediately. And he says, these are generations. Now, these generations are not the generations in the day of creation. It is a blueprint that was going to play out in time. Every day in time is a thousand years. When the flood came, it was about 1,400 after there was a time period. And when you come to Christ, there was also a lapse of time. Through time, the deception, that's all Satan can do. He's got no power on earth. Otherwise, he would have stopped the Christ from coming. He killed a whole generation of babies before Moses, a whole generation of babies before Christ. And after Christ, he tried to kill the infant church in that 40 year period of real time of trouble and persecution. The fact I'm saved means Satan doesn't have power. <laughs> Christ conquered him on the cross, but what he does, he deceives. And it's amazing how they have tried to adjust the calendar because Jesus wasn't just born for, he was born for BC. He wasn't born on zero. There are so many calendars to check, but if you go to the overall, you realize God is always in time, even if people try to mess it up. So whatever man does, he can never change the word of God that is settled in the heavens or the guarantees of God that is settled and it will come to pass. When it comes to the times when God dealt with the curses of the earth, which is water and fire, there's always this time of injury. And second Peter tells us this time is there because God wants people to be saved. God loves us. He's not standing there with a stick trying to kill us.
But if you understand these times and purposes, you will understand all these horror stories in the Old Testament. God destroyed a whole generation with a flood, then called a nation and said, go kill the people, take their promised land. He didn't stop at the individual lives because his purposes was worked out. In Christ, everything in heaven, on earth, under the earth comes together in Christ. Don't get stuck in the stories. Understand the times and purposes. So if we go right back to Genesis 1, light came in. In the flood, there was a new day. Approximately a thousand years later, God called Abraham. And in Genesis 17, 7, he says, In your seed after you and in your seed in their generations. There was a split in the provision of seed. God sits in the heavens and he laughs because Satan was working with the generational seed, infiltrating them. But Jesus was the son of David, the son of Abraham, the son of God. God had his plans settled in the heavens. And on day two, we see water was separated from water and that firmament was called a heaven. So this is where... The world started that was going to bring forth the Christ and Christ was the end of that world. On day three, vegetation was made. There was no sun or stars or moon and vegetation, we know they need the sun to grow. But here the light was the life. What we have is principles in time. When David came on the scene, the first psalm, he says, I am a tree planted by the river. The message says, I'm a tree replanted in Eden. A thousand years after Abraham is David. And then a thousand years after David, the true light came into the world. It correlates with day four when God made the sun, the moon and the stars. And the fourth man came in and brought a total new world. World. So when Jesus Christ came in, he said, the people that sat in darkness, they saw a great light. Hosea says, he will come to us like the morning. And when the heavens open up, God declared, today I have declared you my son. And Christ poured his spirit into us so that we can be the children growing up into be sons. And when the sons are manifested, time will be finished. If you go to Genesis 1, look at the pattern. Three is God, four is earth. It was light, water, land. And then light, water, land. First preparation, then filling, and then rest. But when Adam sinned, day four broke out in a detour of knowledge or a day of death. For in that day you'll die. Did they die? No. Yes. No. Yes. They died spiritually immediately. And that DNA ruled until Christ. Christ came to rectify death because the cross is a tree of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil. The problem is that evil always overcome the good. But when Christ came, he was the branch that came out of the stem of Jesse. And on him was wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. This was the candlestick. This tree of life was now nailed to the tree of good and evil so we can be a new creature in Christ. It's a total new world. In the beginning was preparation and then filling. And this is exactly what happened in time. Before the cross, it was a time of preparation. The people that sat in darkness saw a great light. He will come to us like the morning, Hosea says, and the day broke. So it's preparation after the cross is the time of filling. So there remains a rest for the people of God. On day four, he made the sun and moon and stars. But on day five, he filled the skies and the waters. Day five was the refreshing that Martin Luther brought. He could not bring reformation. Jesus Christ brought reformation. Acts 3 tells us there will be a time of refreshing unto the restoration and then there'll be rest. There remains a rest. And that's the manifestation of the sun's year. And then we'll be back on course, Ephesians says, in the ages to come. In time, we have four seasons, Adam, Noah, Abraham and Christ.
And the prophets talk about the due season, which had a former rain and a former and a latter rain. The whole period after the cross is a due season. It's the season of the kingdom, which is refreshing. Restoration means that's the final mystery that was revealed from the beginning. The end is always determined from the beginning. When you were born, you were born with DNA inside of you. And that's what you're going to be at the end. If you reach your full potential, people get born again, but they never reach their full potential and their candles are removed. But in Christ, he says, blessed are those that sleep in Christ. They will rest from their labor and their work follow them. So time is what we have to prepare for eternity. And guys, we live in the bestest of time because as time goes, revelation grows. And the year 2000, immortality was preached like no one's business. And this is what we're in now. The next day that is breaking now is going to be the greatest day on the face of the earth, taking us back into the eternal purposes of God. And when we want to understand days, we have to go back to the place of first mentioning and the principles laid down. Genesis 1.14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide day from the night. We have already had one division, light and darkness. But in time, this is the day of death to divide light from darkness. Jesus said, I am the light that come into the world. Why? To divide light from darkness, the moon. And please, we need to read these prepositions and and in and know they all mean something. The and means something else. He says, to divide day from night and to let them be for seasons, days, and years. First, he describes the whole period of time, which is day and night. And this pattern was set right through these seven days. It was evening, morning, day. It was good, day one. Evening, morning, day. It was good, day two. And it goes right through when God made man, he says, it's very good <laughs> because man is the crown of creation. Man was to rule creation. So these seven days in Genesis are the patterns set in time.